So how did you get around down there in those cities? Well, I happen to live in my shop, in my apartment, we're right on a streetcar line. So I didn't have to worry about a car. But you couldn't buy a car if you wanted to during the war. Uh, there weren't any. Uh, they weren't manufacturing any. They weren't manufacturing anything. Everything was for the war effort. All these plants had been turned over for ammunition and whatever they needed for the war. In fact, there were several years after the war that was very difficult buying a new car. It took a while for them to get back into manufacturing what they what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, and during the war, um, <laughs> you just couldn't buy anything. Uh, you'd see a something would come into the store. You didn't even know what it was, but you see a line of people lining up to buy something. You join the line. By the time you got up there, you didn't know what you were going to get. Uh, maybe it'd be a package of cigarettes and you didn't even smoke, but you still bought them because you knew somebody that couldn't, that wanted to smoke and, and would want cigarettes. Uh, <laughs> to this day, I hate standing in line, <laughs> and I won't stand in line much for anything because we did it all during the war. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was nothing compared to what the boys had to do overseas, that's for sure. Did you have, uh, how was your family affected during this time? My family? Back in, back in North. Well, my sisters were all married and had children, so their husbands were not in the war. I had no real relative, well, in, in the war that I knew of myself. My family was small to begin with. So men who had families were exempt? Oh, well... My one sister's husband was a professor at the university in, in North Dakota. So he had to take over training something for the war. I mean, to have the job. He was an ag engineer, but he had to take his other classes training these boys for things they had to do during the war and so, and so forth. So the ones at home, but they, they weren't drafted. It was getting to the point that they would have had to go, some of them that were that had children. But uh, mainly it was just the single one, the single people that had to go in, that were drafted. Uh, not that some didn't go in, but uh, that some you know, okay. that were drafted, as far as I know. And I had no brothers in there. I had no brothers, so I had no one in there myself. Right. My dad always thought I should join the wax. He wanted somebody in the service of the family. I told him, I don't know what I'd do. They'd probably make me cook or something. I, <laughs> I was sure nobody wanted their hair fixed in the service. So this uh, man that you were dating, did you marry him before he went uh, to the Yes, war? I had been dating Jim then for several, a couple of years. And of course, when he got drafted, we were engaged. When he got drafted. Mm -hmm. And he was gone... They sent them all over for training. He went to Chicago for his training. He was with the Air Force. Well, it was the Air Corps then, but mm -hmm. it turned out to be the Air Force. He was trained for as a mechanic, so he worked. He was never, even overseas, he was never actually in the, the fighting part. He was always working with the airplanes and so forth. But um, when and he was gone for... A, I don't know how long, a couple of months or so of training to begin with. Then he had a furlough and came home, and that's when we got married. Hmm. We were just married in his folks' home with the minister and so on and so forth. And there were many, many war marriages that didn't work out <laughs> because they were too fast and the guys were gone and mm -hmm. for five years. And when they came back, they went for a different. Mm -hmm. it, was a different it was a different time in life. Very, a tough time in life for that age. That it was. 